Federal Executive Council approves 28 billionaire infrastructure for Wasa District in FCT. NNPC to sign MOU with Morocco on 7,000 kilometer gas pipeline project. All rises and weakening dollar and potential supply disruptions. Plus, many shares across the globe rise on Thursday after Wednesday's negative session. This is Business Express on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, the NTA, and we are reaching you from Abuja, the nation's capital. I am Leah Kating, Baba Tunde, your guide. Determined to extend the development of the nation's capital for a sustainable future, the federal government has approved more than 28.1 billion euro for the provision of desired infrastructure at Wasa on affordable district. Minister of the FCT, Mohamed Musa Bello, announced this at the media briefing after the meeting of the Federal Executive Council in Abuja. Contract for that project was awarded in 2014 at the sum of 56 billion. But as time went by and due to inflation and so many other factors, we had to vary the contract and the prior to reflect current reality. We are going to have uh, two waste treatment uh, substations and then two electricity substations. So it's a whole comprehensive development of a district and drainage and of course a number of bridges and if this infrastructure is done it opens up the districts and allows all the plot allotees to be able to develop their plots which obviously will also extend the development of the city to that part of the overall territory. The federal government says the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFT, has opened up opportunities for the Nigerian finance industry. The government says the African Free Trade will create $3.4 trillion opportunities and deepen financial technology space for the industry. And Nigeria has one of the largest gas reserves in the world, and Vice President Yemir Sinbaju says the use of gas as a transition fuel would not only help in stemming deforestation, it would also advance Nigeria's broader development goals, stating that other developing countries will also benefit from the adoption of gas as a transition fuel. Vice President Osin Baju stated these on, uh, when he received the U.S. Special Presidential Envoy on Climate Change, John Kerry, who was on a working visit to Abuja. The vice president highlighted the need for Nigeria to continue to explore and use gas as a way of arresting deforestation, transiting away from dirtier fuels like diesel, kerosene and petrol, while at the same time ensuring that the country has the necessary energy base load for industrialization, pointing out that Nigeria has one of the largest gas reserves in the world and should benefit from his exploitation.
The Naira still trades at about 700 to a dollar at the parallel market. Let's see the official exchange rate. Now, despite the number of years that commercial banks have existed in Nigeria, there appears not to be a commensurate tally of bankable Nigerians based on the population of the country. The fiscal presence of banks is still felt mostly in urban areas in the country, yet the population of the unbanked certainly outweighs the bankable ones, according to the World Bank. Only 64 million Nigerian adults are bankable, which shows the huge gap in the number of bankable Nigerians. To discuss one sure ways to reach the unbanked is Uchiolo. He is a former president of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. You're welcome, Uchiolo Business Express. Thank you very much for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. So when we say 64 million adult Nigerians are unbanked, what does that mean? Can you help us put this in context? Yeah, what that means is that the rest of that uh, population in question do not have access to any financial services. There are no touch points for them to assess finance. They don't have business, they don't have accounts at all. And so are, you know, excluded from the financial system. That's basically what, you know, that means. Hmm. It's, it's 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 quite um, worrisome, if I may say, because it's it's it seems that the banks are far away from citizens, or are these set of people averse to to approaching the banks? Well, uh, there are a lot of um, issues, you know, surrounding that. We, we need to get the basics right. Okay. Um, in line with the central bank mandate, is to capture everybody, so that in the financial system because that will help business and economic growth. But what you have is that uh, concentration of financial services are the urban areas. And basically, uh, the rural areas are far removed from bank branches because of, one, you have uh, uh, very difficult to reach areas in the rural areas, and then you don't have the necessary infrastructure, electricity, and all that. So it's difficult, the bank uh, branches and ATM uh, you know, don't have this. But uh, what that means is that there was, a, you know, the financial inclusion strategy, I think 2000. And mm, yeah, FSS 2020. Yeah. Mm. So uh, it's been taken in phases. What you have had, you know, various initiatives to reach in the, uh, the unbanked. And what you have, what we have, the share agency network, the mobile money and all that, they've been able to, they concentrated more in the urban areas. They have been tremendous uh, um, uh, success in our area. So the next phase is actually uh, to deploy through leveraging technology, uh, digital wallet, face, uh, digital ID and all that, all the bottlenecks that, you know, that has, you know, prevented this from happening, especially, of course, you know, the insecurity. The mm -hmm. case in point was in Zamfara, they had to shut down the network and all that. So it's difficult. Insecurity is there. You have issue of electricity. So maybe we should be thinking about power, solar powered uh, POS that can help, you know, get uh, access to this. But in a nutshell, they are not averse. You also have the issue of illiteracy, financial literacy. So these are critical. Uh, a lot of things are being done. But what we have seen today is because there are largely untapped opportunities in the area and the fintechs, are, you know, they have concentrated so much in the in the mm, urban yes. area and the semi-urban. So the next phase of you know, is the you know uh, the rural areas. Uh, the challenge for them is now they should come out with uh, workable solutions to reach those uh, uh, rural areas. That, you know because one they could the strategy the business model should change because you find that these people in rural areas they still use a susu. So can we capture the susu? 
to the you know yes uh, like like um talking about that mm. i i have a farm yes and um when i employed a, a manager for the farm because he was is in a village yes. and i realized there's nobody in that village that owns a bank account yeah, right. so if i needed to send money to him or do some things uh, then i would have to physically take cash so after two months i told him i was not going to do that you have to open a bank account yeah. he said it was not that everyone was scared of owning a bank account we eventually did that and um right now in that village there's a pos point mm -hmm. in that particular village but then they got exposed to scammers and then they said they said you encouraged us to open a bank account and now people called us they took numbers from us and then they began to take our monies from our accounts is that a problem for it, reaching it, it, the unbanked is, you know like uh there it, it, like every other system you could have some challenges those are challenges but those mm -hmm. challenges can be resolved there is no foolproof in technology that you will not be you know hacked or something but then um, we need to uh, deploy authorized agents mm -hmm. once they are listed you have you know you, you, you take cognizance of them you should be able to uh, make sure that you you know those you are dealing with that is one and then the pos the technology can track all this let's you know i think we need more advocacy it has happened the refunds can happen because that's also another if they have been scammed and it's not real that refund should happen because if it is not your act it's not your act and that should be you know so those regulations uh, technology can solve those immediate things all i've said is that our current realities we should go back to the drawing board appreciate our current realities and deploy because there is nothing technology is not helping to do today. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, even this uh, smartphone, because all of us, you know, at least mm -hmm. about 100 something million people have SIM cards or let's say 80 million mm -hmm. have telephones. So this can happen. The mobile money system where you can transfer their money and also make deposit, those are there. So, you know, uh, we should continue to encourage. I think we have not done the advocacy more in the rural area in terms of using the various local languages too, you know. But that's been tremendous success. Mm -hmm. That's been tremendous success. Okay. But the challenge is for us, you know, the tech people, uh, the banks, to come together and evolve products in line with, in, in you know, in relation to our current realities. And insecurity also has not helped because you have quite a lot of uh, uh, people, you know, uh, not being able to access the services because I can't go to the world zone to, you know, mm -hmm. deploy, you know. So I think as we begin to, uh, we've seen improvement in security. If that does happen, you will see more people coming to, uh, you know, because it's a huge untapped opportunities for the rural area. I thank God for what people are doing in NTA to disseminate information that, even you know the small mom and pop shops in the rural area can become agents to you know the banks. You know the telcos are there. The telcos are doing you know payment service bank have been mm -hmm. licensed, mm -hmm. and the telcos they are all over everywhere. So these are you know we will see you know um, full if on full implementation or execution of this lofty objective, we will begin to see uh, more adoption because it's better for us mobilize savings can be used on the back of the deposit to, you know, uh, assess credit, which in turn will, you know, improve the economic well-being. And so they're all linked together. It's in our interest for everybody, all stakeholders to get involved to make sure that this uh, financial inclusion strategy works. Okay, so while we look at the, the, the making the, the, the strategy work, you said something that um, I would want to take you back a bit. Yes. When, when you say every POS transaction can be tracked, yes. Some would say it is not possible. Uh, you know, it's the, when people say that, you know, are they tech, you know, I can say that from our tech. Why can't you track it? it the transactions are there. And that's what technology has come to do. You can. You can. There is no, I'm not a tech person, but I know that this. But I know you have a lot of interest in the fintech. Uh, yes, industry. I have a lot of interest in the fintech. The fintechs are doing you know, great job, great job. Mm. Now, the job, like we've said, I've agreed, is that. The concentration has been urban and semi-urban, but they can develop real products. And that's where to make money. They develop, you know, the huge chunk, huge chunk of deposits lying out there. 
in the rural mm. areas mm. that can come in to bring it them to the formal finance sector mm. and that's what is happening today we're beginning to see some products that are going there especially for the uh, smallholder farmers mm. like you have rightly said mm. they don't want to go to the bank they don't want to waste their time <laughs> but most of some of them carry phones mm. they can have mobile agents and then you know telcos are there payment service banks they don't they, don't, they are branchless is you know you use their smartphone to you know mm -hmm. so we need to educate we need to uh, let them assurance that it is you know because trust and confidence is very critical to financial intimidation and that's you know what like what you said the story you gave earlier mm -hmm. but as they begin to trust and see that yes if any of these infractions happen you could be refunded you you have uh, 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 so of respite, so yes. and the, I think the, another thing is that how can regulation make sure that um, something that you did not authorize, we should have some kind of bank assurance to make sure that you know that you know uh, there is no loss on the side of you know the rural. Uh, uh, and people. rural people, yeah, yes. It's very critical. Mm. Okay. I think that can create assurance and trust. Okay, so we, um, let's look into the medium term now. What role do you see banks playing in uh, in, in the in the growth strategy of, of, of the Nigerian economy? Growth and strategy of Nigeria. Of course, you see, the Nigerian economy, uh, we've been playing the roles mm -hmm. as financial intermediators, aggregators of deposit, and then leveraging on that to, you know, um, extend credit uh, to uh, small businesses that is being done there are a lot of interventions uh, i don't want to go to the dynamics of why or no you know but mm -hmm. i think we're beginning to see that that's a place where we have to make money so the banks are reshaping our, you know uh, their business model uh, through the signf and all that i think the next step is to using those agents to make sure that they get credits there are huge opportunities for the banks to do that and it works both ways. It helps this, you know, the regulators to capture everybody in the financial system. And it's a lot easier to manage inflation, exchange rate, interest rate, if you capture them. So the banks have been, you know, they know this and they have to get involved in that. Okay, I must sincerely thank you, Mr. Uchi, for always sharing your thoughts with us on Business Express. Thank you. So much. Have a nice day and I wish you a safe journey back to Lagos. Thank you. Great. So we move on now. The Senate has cautioned that revenue generating agencies that comply with regulation on remittances to the Federation account are at the risk of being excluded from the 2023 fiscal year. Chairman Senate Committee on Finance Solomon Adeola issued the threats at an interactive session with stakeholders on the 2023 to 2025 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. Force. So we are regulating other agencies to enable them to generate more revenue. The only way we can generate funding is the stipends taken from tender fees. If you are going to be taking much, then your contribution to must increase. We can't continue to live in the past that just go by the dogmas of the past. But the realities are calling for a new order. That is why it's important for you to undertake a tour, a study tour of some of these uh, the advanced countries where money is being generated. So that you can come up with something to be very productive. President Bama Dubai is likely to present the 2023 budget proposal within the first week of October this year. Speaker House of Representatives Femi Bajabia Miller stated these while inspecting ongoing renovation of key areas of the National Assembly complex. I'm hoping that the budget will be presented um, latest by first week of October. Next. Next is our surviving COVID-19 series as put together by Musa Abubakar. Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with...
Surviving COVID-19 series is brought to you in partnership with the Central Bank of Nigeria. All right, let's now see prices of all the commodities in the global market space. Well, um, apologies for that uh, abrupt stoppage there. The equities market closed on a negative note in a midweek trade. At the end of the trading session on Wednesday, the NGX All Share Index depreciated to 49,575.93 points after closing flat in the previous session. A total of 197.45 million shares valued at 2.94 billion were traded by investors in 3,462 deals, with market capitalization closing out the session at 26.74 trillion era. And away from home, shares in the Asia-Pacific mildly rose on Thursday after Wednesday's negative session, Nekaoko reports. In the Asia-Pacific mildly rose on Thursday after Wednesday's negative session. The Nikkei 25 in Japan rose 0.21%. Mainland China's Shanghai Composite declined 1.2%. And the Hang Seng Index added 0.38%. U.S. equity futures were little changed early Thursday morning. Futures tied to the Dow Jones Industrial Average inched higher by 0.05%. S&P 500 added 0.07%. And Nasdaq 100 ticked 0.06% higher. European markets were unsteady at the start of the trading day this Thursday. The DAX opened in the red before moving to a 0.13% gain, as UK's FTSE and the French CAC added 0.24% and 0.27% respectively. African markets opened mixed with South Africa's JFE Africa to 40, Morocco's free float index and Namibia's overall index all in positive territory this morning, while Tunisia's stone index is in red. And this is where we end this episode of the program. Business Express returns Friday at 3 p.m. Don't forget you can access all previous episodes of Business Express on YouTube on the NTS channel. You can also communicate with us via our various social media platforms. My name is Leah Katung Baba, and we're wishing you a very, very fruitful day ahead and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>